AQA A level physics. Uh, this is my first electricity video. Uh, basics of electricity. This for this particular chunk, that's what the specification says. Not particularly useful. I'm going to put meat on the bones. I'm going to talk about each of these bits in depth. Okay. I suggest before you start having a go at these videos on electricity, you make sure you know the GCSE stuff really well. Uh, have a look at my GCSE YouTube site. There's loads of videos on electricity on there. And this is the knowledge that it assumes that you know before you do A level. Okay, I say try not to laugh. Current is the rate of flow of charge. The rate of means per second, it means in a certain time. The rate of flow of charge, okay? Uh, it's the amount of charge that passes a point in a certain time. Now, in an electrical circuit, uh, this charge is carried by electrons. Um, it is not, current is not the rate of flow of electrons, it's the rate of flow of charge. In a circuit, the charge happens to be carried by these little tiny particles called electrons. Free electrons can move through the wire and when these delocalized electrons move through the wire, then you have a, a flow of charge and current is the rate of flow of charge. Uh, charge, what is charge? Charge is a property of these tiny particles, like particles can have mass and they can have charge and charge can be positive or negative and like charges repel, etc., etc. Charge is measured in coulombs, okay? These tiny particles have a tiny, tiny charge and electrons have a negative tiny, tiny charge. The direction of the current, uh, current flows from positive to negative, okay? Uh, and current is the flow of positive charge. That can be a little bit confusing. Imagine we had uh, a radioactive source that gave off alpha particles. Well, the alpha particles on here are going from left to right, so the current is going from left to right. It's the flow of positive charge. Imagine you had an electron gun, which is chucking out electrons. If the electrons are going from left to right, then the current is actually going from right to left because the electrons are negative and current is the flow of positive charge. So it's the opposite. Don't worry too much about this in first year. It will be important in the second year. Now for a steady current, I equals Q over T. A steady current, the current doesn't change. The, the value of the current is constant. Uh, a graph of current against time is just a horizontal line. Uh, and therefore, the charge, Q, is the area under the graph, that rectangle. Okay? If the current varies with time, then strictly speaking, we should say I equals delta Q over delta T. So the amount of charge which flows in a certain time would actually tell you the average current. Later on on the course, when we do capacitors and one or two other situations where the current isn't steady, then you can't just say I equals Q over T. Delta Q over delta T would tell you the average current. It is still the area under the graph, okay? Later on, when you've done a bit more maths, uh, you will understand this, that the current at an instant in time is dq dt and that means that if you have a graph of q against time it's actually the gradient at a certain point in time dq dt means the gradient of the graph don't worry about that if you're just starting a level physics don't worry about that if you're in your second year you should understand that analogies we use analogies a lot in a level physics to kind of explain what's going on in an electrical circuit. A, a very useful analogy is think about the petrol station. 
cars drive through the petrol station and they fill up with petrol and then they drive around uh, and they use up all of their petrol and then they come back to the petrol station and they fill up again. So what does the petrol station represent? What does the petrol represent? What does a car represent? What does the rate of flow of cars represent? Have a little think. In my particular way of thinking about it, the petrol station is the power supply. Uh, a coulomb of charge. Imagine a coulomb of charge goes through the power supply and it fills up with petrol. It gains electrical potential energy. Okay? Chemical potential energy is transferred into electrical potential energy and that coulomb leaves with lots of electrical potential energy. So a car is a coulomb of charge, a packet of charge. It doesn't go round in packets, but imagine a coulomb of charge going round. And then the rate of flow of cars is the current, coulombs per second. This is important. In the power supply, uh, chemical energy, if it's like a chemical cell, chemical energy is transferred into electrical potential energy or chemical potential energy actually is transferred into is changed into electrical potential energy in a component such as a resistor or a bulb or a motor or whatever the electrical potential energy is transferred into something else for example heat in a resistor electrical potential energy is transferred into heat. Voltage is all about energy. Think about energy, okay? And this is a very important equation. V equals W over Q. Uh, a volt is a joule per coulomb. The power supply is six volts. That means that every coulomb gets six joules of electrical potential energy. V equals W over Q. W is the energy transferred by W because it actually stands for work. Yeah, Energy transfer and work are virtually the same thing. Okay, so energy transferred W per coulomb. The voltage across a power supply, we call it its EMF. It's electromotive force. is the energy transferred per coulomb of charge that passes through it, joules per coulomb. And then the voltage across a component is the energy transferred per coulomb that passes through it. There's my little friend when I teach this in a lesson. My little friend Colin. Colin the coulomb and his adventures, gaining potential energy, losing potential energy. Uh, how much potential energy does he lose is transferred when he goes through a component. How much energy does he have at a particular place is called the potential at that place. The potential at A is 6 volts. The potential at B is 2 volts. The potential at C is 0 volts. Colin the Coulomb. Hello, Colin. Hello, Dave. Yeah, my mate Colin. I haven't got very many mates. He's one of them. A current of 20 milliamps flows through a bulb for 10 minutes when a PD of 6 volts is put across it. How much charge flows through the bulb in this time? How much energy is transferred in the bulb? Pause the video. Have a go. The answer, 3, 2, 1, is there. And if you don't get that, you've done it wrong. Or I've done it wrong, if possible. Okay, now, the current through a component depends on two things. It depends on what voltage we put across it. Generally, the bigger the voltage you put across a component, then the bigger the current that flows through the component. Voltage across, current through. If anybody says the voltage through a component, they don't understand electricity. Okay? It's the potential difference across the component, and if you put a potential difference across it, and the current flows through it uh, and it will depend on what the component is yeah it will depend on the and I'm sure you know the resistance of the component 
here we see a graph uh, for a bulb, a filament lamp. And when the voltage gets bigger, the current gets bigger. But for a bulb, it isn't a straight line. Okay, resistance is how hard it is for a current to flow through a component. If you put a voltage across a component and you get a big current, then it has a small resistance and vice versa. You can think of resistance as being what voltage you need to get a current of one amp. Okay. Uh, the resistance of a fixed resistor is constant. Clues in the name. Uh, the resistance of a wire, uh, for example, the filament of a bulb, uh, depends on the current flowing through it, basically because it depends on its temperature. The hotter it is, the harder it is for the electrons to flow through. And then there's this component called a diode, uh, where the resistance depends on the direction of the current. Talk a bit more about that later. Uh, have a go at this, pause the video, hopefully you can read the numbers off the graph. What is the resistance of this bulb when it's got 4 volts across it, 12 volts across it, and there you go. Okay, R equals V over I. Get the voltage, get the current, voltage divided by current. Nothing to do with gradients or anything like that. R equals V over I. At any point on the graph, the voltage divided by the current tells you the resistance. Notice here that the resistance of the bulb is getting bigger for reasons just discussed.